weekly DIY crafts. So today um, we're going to be doing shrink dink jewelry. And so I wanted to go ahead and share with you a couple of things that I've already made so that you guys can see what it is that we're doing. Um, so long as the video is working properly. Okay, I think it is. All right, so some of the things that we're gonna be doing today is making shrink dink jewelry. So I've gone ahead and already made some so you guys can see. So this is a really cool dragon that's reading a book. I can put that up close. Yes, can you see that when it's not spinning? Here it is. Just a little dragon reading a book. And I don't know if you guys can see it. Probably not because it's not clearing very well. Um, this actually says how to train your human. So the dragon reading a book goes hand in hand with our um, our uh, Tales and Tales summer reading because it's got a really cute tail. Let's pull that up one more time so you guys can see it. And then the back side of it is just him reading a book again. And I've gone ahead and put a bead on it and put it on an earring clasp here. So you can make um, earrings, you can make rings, you can take, make um, necklaces, whatever you want with shrink things. They're actually really versatile and they actually make really cool keychains. So those are my earrings. They're pretty cool. Librarian wearing earrings that are uh, a dragon reading a book. He's learning about how to train his human. Totally cool. If you've ever seen How to Train Your Dragon, one of my favorite movies. Um, kind of spin off on that. So shrink things are really cool because you take something that's this big and you're allowed to put in a lot of artistic flair. Um, with this, you get to put in a bunch of details and a giant hole from a hole punch. And then you shrink it in the oven and it gets to this big. So it goes from this giant thing that you've taken painstaking amount of time to create all these really cool details to something this big. And this makes a really cool earring. So about this big. And if you wanted it to be like a stud, something that you put like just a little tiny one, you could make this even smaller and it'll shrink to even smaller. So just kind of that relationship. And then I'll show you one more. I did a Mockingjay one. So that's the big version. And then once it shrinks down, it's really tiny. So I'll pull that up so you guys can see it. You can see all the details in there. And it basically went from this big to this big. And it's just you're creating earrings. So a couple of things about shrink dinks. Um, shrink dink is just plastic. This is a plastic piece of paper. Uh, you can actually use takeout containers, those plastic takeout containers, and make shrink dinks out of them because it's the same type of plastic that shrink dink uses. Um, if you are not a fan of reusing and recycling, uh, especially something that you've had food in, you can buy the shrink dink plastic um, on Amazon for like 100 sheets for a small amount of money, so not too, too bad. The kicker with shrink dinks is it's soft. Um, it's not soft. Plastic, so it's really difficult to write on. So what you have to do is you have to rough it up a bit. So I've gone ahead and taken a sheet of shrink ink and use a smaller version. I'm going to cut a little piece off. So I've created a template of things that I want to turn into earrings. So I have a horse, a dog, you'll see the sunflower that I already did over here, the mockingjay that I already did, and really down at the bottom is my dragon reading a book, which are the earrings that I'm totally rocking today. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do the hummingbird. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing and not me, as awesome as I am. So I'm going to pull you guys forward, tilt you on down, and here we go. So I have my hummingbird up here in the corner here. Let's tilt you guys down a little bit more. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clear plastic film shrink dink paper and I'm going to put it over the hummingbird right here. And because, like I said, this is super smooth, you're not going to be able to write with colored pencil on it. It's just not going to work. Like, nothing happens when I do this, and that's not <coughs> very helpful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some sandpaper, um, 
any sandpaper will do. I honestly don't know the grit of the sandpaper, but probably like 60 grit, 80 grit, something like that, something really rough. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rough up this paper. I'm gonna go one direction, and then I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And you'll see I've made my translucent paper now really gritty, but it's only gritty on one side, so I wanna do the other side too. So I'm gonna go ahead and rough this up as well. One direction, and then the opposite direction. The more you rough it up, the more color that's gonna adhere to um, the page, the shrink ink paper rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it over my hummingbird again, right here. And then I am gonna go crazy with colors. So I'm gonna go and do the typical hummingbird that we have, and that's the red, throated red red beard hummingbird red something hummingbird anyway it's got a red uh beard right here and then it's got a green body so see now how um the colored pencil is now adhering to that shrink ink paper if you didn't want to do colored pencil you can go ahead and go straight for markers um, with that same effect, if you file it first or sand it down first to kind of give it that rough effect, it's going to come out a lot better. So I'm just doing a couple different colors of green. I don't really care that I'm outside the lines, so I'm going to cut this out anyway. So for me, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to do some really bright green tail feathers down here. And then if you notice that it's more, um, the colored pencil is adhering more here than it is here, you can just go back and rough that up again. And then look at that. See how the color is really taking to that. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over this with this color green because I like this color green better. And then I'm just going to go really lightly up at the top here. Really lightly, really lightly. And then I'm going to switch back to the screen and kind of just do the wings. So I'm not being super meticulous with my color because I'm going to outline it with a permanent black marker. So you can see all these details. Make this nice and light. And then I'm going to do the beak probably, I don't know, what color is a hummingbird beak orange? So I'm just tracing, and this is really, really cool. So we'll make it orange, although I'm not sure a hummingbird's beak is orange, but that's okay. So then if you have a fine tip Sharpie, this is going to be the thing that's really going to help you out here. So all you're going to do is you're going to outline everything that you just did. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the eye. And if you want, you can take a white um colored pencil and color in that right there believe it or not it will show up once you put this in the oven so shrink dinks if you do it yourself or if you um buy them you want to put them in the oven for like maybe three minutes or less and what's going to happen is they're going to curl up and then they're going to flatten out and once they flatten out, that's when they're good to take out of the oven. Um, and that's when they're down to that shrinked size. So I'm just going to go here. And I'll show you guys how cool this looks. So once I lift it off the paper, you're going to see how different it is. Right now you can see the outlines through here. I'm going to go down, do the tail feathers. Do some of these. And then there's a little body here. And then there's some flight feathers going on here. So this is here. light feathers so 
So the cool thing about this is you're allowed to do as much detail or as little detail as you want. Here we go. And then I'm just going to do this. And finally, I'm going to do the beak. And then when I hold it up, you're going to see it looks pretty translucent. So what you can do, and why I like to sand both sides, so I sanded this side. This side is not as bright, but what you can do is you can go back and take those same colors and go ahead and do the other side. And that's going to help darken both sides up. So when the shrink dink actually um, shrinks up, it's not as translucent on one side as it is the other. Um, once you finally heat it up. So let me just show you guys one more time. So you'll see that this is one side. Is that a little closer? And then when I flip it over, it's a lot darker. So I did, I actually colored both sides, but I didn't write the title of the book on both sides. So you can really, you really can't see through it as much as you would like to. Um, so it's kind of beneficial to do both sides. So, like I said, I'm going to do both sides. I'm just going to go back and just color this eye piece right here nice and white. And I'm going to take that lighter green. And go ahead and shade in these areas right here. And then it, because it is a little bit translucent, it's going to pick up the different colors. I tend to like to do one color on one side and another color on the other. So I think it looks really cool. And because it bleeds through just a little bit. So my red, I think it's a red-bellied hummingbird. I might be wrong with that too, but someone can tell me in the comments. And then just my orange for my beak over here. And then what you want to do, just so you guys can see it, see how it's much darker now on both sides. But I've only done the marker on this side, so I want to do the marker on this side just so when, I, when it um, shrinks up, it looks identical. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you guys how to put the earrings together. So... I'm going to do this part, and I'm not using this outline anymore because I just want to follow the lines that I've already created on the other side. Um, things to worry about, if you do a different line on this side, it's going to show through on the other side because it does, um, it is slightly transparent once it's heated up. Uh, the colors just don't, aren't perfect. So I'm going to do this, follow my lines, follow my lines. So whatever you do to one side, you just want to do to the other. And if you don't actually, um, I don't really have a good picture, but you'll notice on this one right here, I didn't do the marker on this side. I only did it on this side, so when you fire it up in the oven to shrink it, the only thing you're going to see the details on is this side. Um, so I'm going to go back and color this side um, right over here. And also note that you can see some smudge lines here. Um, the marker is not, it doesn't stick very well until you put it in the oven. And even at that, you still might want to um, put like a clear coat on it. A spray paint clear coat would work really, really well. Um, so just kind of throwing that out there. And then we're just going to do this. I'm going to do my wings, and then I'm going to cut it out. So the beauty of this is, you can do whatever you want here because you're just tracing it. Um, being that the material you're using is completely translucent, it allows you to trace whatever you want to trace, which is really exciting. Um, so for all you animal lovers out there, I highly recommend 
if you want, you can do a, um, a trace, an outline of your dog. So I've gone ahead and of course echoes in like everything I do. So this is echo right here. And what you can do is you can just trace a picture of him and then that will be what your earrings are or whatever if you decide to do a necklace or something along the lines of that that'll be that as well i'm gonna do this all right now we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut this out so here we go um shrink dink is easy to rip so just be careful when you're doing your scissors that you don't stretch it out too much. So see right there, it already rips a little. So, so you just gotta be careful. And then also, um, because the shrink dink hardens pretty well in the oven, you probably don't wanna do super sharp edges if possible. You want to avoid that. But I want to get in all of these details, so I'm just trying to keep it as close as I can to the wing line. And then just go down this way. And then we'll touch it up one more time after we cut it out. So we might have to add a little bit of black marker. Let me go ahead and cut this out. I'm gonna try not to touch this too, too much. Um, but I am gonna go in and just cut this here. And then just take this piece off just like that. And then I can go back and kind of fix my tail feathers over here. So you can be as close to it as possible um, you do need to leave a spot to put your earring hole in. Um, if you don't make a hole, there'll be nowhere for you to actually put the earring. Or if you're deciding to make a necklace, you've got to make sure you leave that. So, flip this over. The other benefit of doing it on both sides is you can start cutting from one side or the other. So I think I'm going to actually hang this up here from the wings right here. So I'm going to do the whole punch up here. Um, much like I did the hole up here. Right there. And for this one, I just did the hole like in the leaves itself, the flowers itself. And you can see it comes out pretty small. So it's not the end of the world with where you put your hole. Um, but something you want to think about is where are you going to thread your um, earrings through. So let's just continue here. And just like that. Ta-da! When I pick it up, I'm going to grab it. Oops, carefully. Let me tilt you guys back up. Hey! All right, so this is the finished product, and when you go ahead and shrink this, like I said, it's going to shrink dramatically. It's going to go from this big to this big. Um, so scale, margin, one more time. You have this and this. This is how tiny it gets. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And I'll show you guys this one as well. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Alright, so the only thing you gotta think about is where you're gonna put the hole. So I have my hole puncher here. Slide you guys down. Try not to totally cut my head off here. Um, I'm just gonna pierce the upper wing here. And I'm also gonna go back and fix this. Um, you'll see I got a little left over here. I'm just gonna paint that black. So I'm gonna put this in the hole puncher and align it. There we go. So just that little hole, and this is going to dramatically shrink. So take this, tilt you guys back down. I'm going to flip this over so you guys can see the contrast here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix this line right here. So I don't really have a black line here anymore. And then I have 
too much clear here. And then the tip of the point here as well. And that's it. I mean, you can go back and kind of highlight what you need to. I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to leave it just the way it is. And now I'm going to show you guys how to do the jewelry part. So for the jewelry part, let me put this stuff back out of the way. Once you have taken your big shrink ink and made it tiny, same thing, your big one, and made it tiny, now you want to make it into earrings. So things that you can use. Um, you would want an earring clasp, which off the top of my head, I don't remember what these are called. So what you can do is you can just open this up with a pair of pliers that I clearly have right here. And I'm just going to take it and turn it outwards. Excuse me. Take it and turn it outwards. And then you can just, this is it put it on and then you're done. The problem with this is it doesn't dangle enough for me. So what I like to do is take one of these. You can either take a finding, which is just those little tiny circles and add it to add that dangly part. Or you can make your own dangly part and add a bead. So I have one of these Again, my terminology for jewelry parts is not really up to par. Um, but I think this is called an eyelet because it's got the hole at the top. Um, this allows you to add a bead to it. So you can add a little bit of fun. So I have a bag full of beads. I'm going to go ahead and grab, hopefully one of these red ones fits. This is like a purple bead. And I'm just going to put it through this. Not this one, just kidding. That one might not fit. Have to find another one. Put this through. Okay, just kidding. Let me try a different bead. Those ones aren't going to fit. I have these blue beads! <laughs> Alright, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bead on this piece of metal right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom, I'm going to hold it by the bottom, and I'm just going to flatten it. So I'm just going to bend this completely out so it looks like so. And then I'm going to curve back to make a larger loop. Like so. And I'm going to cut off all this excess. I don't need any of this. So I'm going to twist it a little bit more. My cutting edge of my pliers are right here. So I'm just going to go all the way up to the very top. As close as I can get. And remove this excess. So I don't need this. This is junk. And then what I'm left with is this loop. So I'm going to open this loop back up. Like so. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's pretty big. And then all I'm going to do is take this piece and put it right on in, just like this. And then I'm going to close that big loop up. So there are jewelry pliers for this, so that you're not messing with it too too much okay there we go Oops. so I made a big loop here and what that big loop allows it to do is it allows it to dangle let me tilt you guys back up so now this dangles and now I have a dangly earring I also like that I didn't let this shrink dink flatten out entirely I took it out of the oven when it was still kind of curved and the reason I did that is because it looks more authentic when it's curved, because flowers have a nice curve to it. So now that I have this part open, I'm just going to put the two together, like so. And then I'm going to close up this clasp here. And I promise you, when the library reopens, we will revisit this craft, and I'll show you how to do it in person with all the jewelry supplies.
and proper tools because this is not the proper pair of pliers. Okay, and there we go. So now I have this beautiful blue bead and my sunflower. Like that. And it dangles. Okay, that's the important part. And then, ta da! You have yourself a dangly earring. And you would basically do that same thing to this one. Um, of course, you don't have to do sunflowers. You don't have to do the Mockingjay from um, from the movie Mockingjay or from the movie Hunger Games or from the book Hunger Games by Susan Collins. Um, you can do your book dragon, you can do your dog, you can do a hummingbird. Whatever it is you want to do, you guys, the, um, the opportunities are endless. So feel free to make these at home and if you do do so, um, post in the comments all of the cool pictures that you've created and all the cool things that you've done. Until next week, I will see you guys all then. If you did attend this um, Facebook Live craft program, feel free to check it off on your summer reading activities list for that chance to win a local area restaurant gift card. Alright, until next week, I'll see you guys all then.